Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar called What's New with CK12. I'm Dan, and my colleague Katie will be walking you through the newest releases from CK12, while I and our amazing teammate Bailey answer any of your questions. Thanks, Dan, and thanks to everyone who's joined us today. Uh, we're so glad to have you with us, and I'm really excited to share what we've been working on to support student learning and assist you all with teaching. So we're going to go through four kind of major areas of resources. We'll start with our updates to navigating and using CK12, updates to Flexi, which kind of is a portion of our broader student tutor and teacher assistant, content updates, and then some updates in our learning management systems and support. So that's where we'll go. We're going to kind of go through this, um, pause periodically for questions. And with that, we want to make sure you know what you're doing. Get started. Yeah, I just want to make sure that everyone is comfortable with the two Zoom windows. Uh, you should see two different options on your Zoom screen. One's for Q&A and one is for chat. So just to keep things clean during today's presentation, whenever you have a question you'd like the CK12 team to answer, please post that in the Q&A window. That's the window we'll be monitoring throughout the presentation. The chat window is more of a place for community conversation. Uh, we'd love for all of you to introduce yourselves if you haven't already. If you're an educator, please feel free to share where you live and the subject you teach. Just make sure in the chat window that you're sending any general posts to everyone and not just to the CK12 uh, or the panelists. In addition, we'll be answering uh, text uh, questions via text. We'll break a few times to answer questions live and we'll also stay on at the end of the webinar to address any unanswered questions. Also, we are recording this webinar and it will soon be available at ck12.org slash webinars in the archive section if you want to revisit anything you learned today or share all the amazing things you learned tonight with a friend or colleague. So thank you, Dan. With that, we're going to start by talking about our streamlined navigation. So you can see there kind of the older navigation at the top. Um, and then we've actually moved that to the navigation that's just like what you've been seeing in our Flexbook 2.0 platform. We thought it would be easier to understand where everything was no matter where you were on our site. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with that and you've been using our homepage navigation to get to your library or your classes, do not worry, you did not lose your library. You can find it under your name in that navigation. So on that main page, you can click sign in, sign up. Once you're logged in and you're signed in, then your actual classes or library dashboard would make sense as useful information for you. So just click on your name. And just a reminder, those classes are if you are using the CK12 class feature versus one of our integrated learning management systems, which kind of just removes the need to create classes on CK12 because you can just use those with our integrations. So that's the first thing. Subjects, explore, top menu, our search bar, and then all of the original kind of pieces on that main homepage are found under your name on the top right. Talking about the Explore menu, we updated this. We have a direct option to access Flexi now. So that's right there at the top of our Explore menu. Um, we have moved from our cafe, which was meant to answer students' math and science questions and kind of work from there. And all of those questions can now be asked of Flexi. So you get instant answers instead of having to wait for one of our team members or a member of the community to answer your questions. Um, so keep that in mind that's there, along with quick access to our other resources, our Flexbooks, our 2.0 platform, schools that have created and chosen to republish their content in one kind of local place on our schools page. And then some other core resources, our study guides, our adaptive practice, our simulations, and our Plix interactives. Those are all really quickly accessible, as well as a number of other resources. So this is one of my favorite menus on CK12 because it really highlights the different types of resources that you can use on CK12. So I highly encourage you to check that out if you haven't been using that to navigate or just use our search bar because that's also pretty awesome. We also updated our subjects browse. So if you click on subjects or you're kind of moving down the homepage to kind of pick your topic, um, the science ones have stayed the same. The math we've actually migrated and we'll talk about this a little more, um, some of our original books into the 2.0 platform. So you now have for math, both our more interactive books as well as our conventional books. Those are there, some expansion to our adult ed pieces. Um, and then all those little symbols by the social studies ones are community contributed pieces, just to show that there's more content than what CK12 provides. But we do try to make a clean distinction so you know what we've created, what we vet cleanly, um, and then what the community has added to our breadth of resources. So go ahead and check out that subjects menu as well. 
Another great kind of navigation piece that we've added in, if you happen to be using adaptive practice outside of the context of a 2.0 Flexbook, you're using that practice straight from the Explore More menu, you're browsing through that, um, we had some people request options to just quickly bookmark that in their library if they want to be able to find that in a learning management system or to download that. Um, so we've updated those pieces to make it really simple right when you're in those browse pages for adaptive practice if you want to do some of those other actions. Um, and you can always customize that practice, make a quiz out of that. Um, check out some of our videos on how to do that if you're curious. Um, but that definitely is one of those pieces that we'll talk about. Um, we have updates to that functionality if you're making your own questions as well. Another amazing thing that I love seeing this year is we really try to take your feedback and incorporate that into our platform as much as possible when we can. We have a really small team, but they do amazing work. And one of the things that we did is that within the class reports, and these are accessible if you're using CK12 classes or integrated learning management systems, Canvas, Schoology, Google Classroom, these are all available for your classes, and they give you that detailed information, the percent correct out of 10 questions correct in practice, the percent on a quiz, or just complete or incomplete for other resources. That's great, but okay, let's say all my students did their homework and I have a whole bunch of 100% on their practice, and I'm not really sure how much they're mastering that. So within those score reports is what we call our skill level that goes from beginning, exploring, developing, proficient to mastery. And we wanted to make it really easy. So if you choose the option at the top and you switch from the score and or the score with the color coded heat map to skill level, you'll see in the bottom left that it will quickly show you how your students are doing on that practice um, from that beginning to mastery option. So you can get a good sense of, okay, who's done their homework? Now let's switch it over and see how the students did on that homework. And then you can always open up an individual student and drill down just like you can see on the right there. So check out that new option on our class reports. So super quick introduction. Um, I know that we have, I'm just kind of pausing here for a second to let you know that Q&A is open. If you have questions there, by all means, go ahead and put them in there. Um, I will continue to move forward with what we're covering, um, but don't be shy. Feel free to ask anything as we go, either about what I'm covering, or if you have a pressing CK12 question about any topic, by all means, toss that in our Q&A and our team will answer you. So with that, we're gonna move on to what's next. And I talked about our teacher assistant, student tutor, and Flexi. So our teacher assistant and student tutor have been live for a while. Um, you can learn more about all of the different components that fit in there at those short links, or just by clicking on the link when you're logged in as a teacher or a student and exploring that page. But we now have one additional one, which is that ck12.org slash Flexi, which is the same thing you'll get to if you use the explore menu. So you don't have to be inside a 2.0 Flexbook to ask Flexi a question. Um, that's really kind of helpful from the perspective of someone that might be using additional resource or they're just using some of our interactives and they have a question about CK12 or they have a math or science question, they can go ahead and go straight to Flexi and go in there. Let's talk about what Flexi looks like and some of the newest updates to there. So one side of Flexi is for students. So that includes, you can see here, some um, encouragements, memory boost, actually answering students' questions. How do I prove the exterior angle theorem? Or can you ice skate on the moon? Some really cool things. So let's drill down into some of those pieces. So the first is student notifications. As students work through Flexbooks, they are given encouragement. They finish a section, they might get a great job, let's go try the unit challenge now, which are challenges built into some of our Flexbooks that students can see as a break point to just double check their understanding. Maybe it's been a while since they did some work. So they might get a reminder that says, still remember what you learned last time. And then you can start that and it'll give them a little memory boost um, and they can go in and answer more questions. Or they're working on their lesson, they do some practice and then they close practice. And we're gonna say, wait, you didn't, you didn't finish, are you sure? Sure you wanna stop now, maybe go back and do that. And then the other thing that you're gonna see there is that just in time reminder, if a student comes in and a teacher has nudged them, and we'll show you what that functionality looks like, but if they are maybe missing work that's late and a teacher sends them a reminder, they'll get a little pop-up reminder. And if they don't come to the platform, we'll send them an email with that same reminder. So you can kind of see that email option on the right there um, as a nudge to go ahead and make sure that they get their work done. 
We've updated from our first round of flexi answers, which were all just kind of like little quick text paragraph options to try to get as much easy to read answers as possible. So you'll see images within there, bullet points, formatted math text, um, tables, really trying to make it as user friendly and quick to get the answer as they're working their way through um, and go ahead and pick from there. We also really try to encourage additional learning. So in Encouraging curiosity, that's one of the coolest things that we've gotten to see as students ask questions. So maybe they ask a question on what is photosynthesis? We'll give an answer and pull from some questions that other students have potentially asked from there or that we think might be additional resources or good questions to ask. And you can see this is actually the chain of a student where they asked a question and then they can ask another question and then another question based on that suggestion and they get to dig deeper and deeper into that particular understanding. So it's not just a quick answer, but really a learning opportunity for them. Another thing that was not available when we started, we started with just answers in our science content. Um, we have now made it possible for students to answer questions or our flexi to answer students math questions as well. So they might type in an equation, you can see steps for that or hide those steps, you'll see the graphs in the bottom. Um, you can see on the right, maybe they took a picture of something and then they have some options for the different ways that they might want to be solving that. Um, or inside this middle one, how do I prove the angle sum theorem. Um, definitely, that actually pulls through our interactive geometry book and allows them to kind of actually see it in action as it interacts. Um, so all sorts of options regarding that math. And that last one where they're taking a picture, if students want to, they have a couple different options. So they could write out a question, take a picture and upload that picture. They could upload an image if they're doing something online. Let's say it's a question in a CK12 Flexbook, they can go ahead and access that and toss it in, or they could write out their equation. Um, so they don't have to worry about kind of math formatting everything perfectly. And we'll say, we think you asked this, is that right? And then go ahead and help them answer that math question. Now this is available as they're learning. The hints are a little different inside practice. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second. But I've really seen a number of different types of questions that come through. So some might be just a simple answer. They're looking to figure out what's happening and we'll pull a resource up to help them answer that question. It might be a math question. Um, clarification. So like, we, what is this called? How does this work out? Um, maybe they are looking for an image to help them understand or a curiosity question, even more so than kind of that pathway curiosity we talked about. Why does my arm fall asleep? Or can you ice skate on the moon or something like that? That really gets some cool answers um, and helps them understand the science behind some of their pieces. So you'll see all different types of questions being asked within Flexi. Inside practice, it's a little bit different. So we don't wanna have them trying to answer a question and then they can just ask Flexi the answer to the question and then answer the question. So instead we allow hints, especially if they're struggling. So if they're answering a question, there's some hints to start with, but they can also, if they get it wrong, we'll surface paragraphs or different components from our platform to help them maybe before they try again with that question. So you'll see different resources in there, but you notice there's no open question within our practice. So they really do have to kind of go through and understand and explore and try to be uh, successful in practice on their own as they work their way through. One other thing that we've started doing is in our student review. So if students are looking at a science lesson right now, they have some options to see the core lesson as well as um, overview or vocab kind of all brought together in a review. And one of those pieces that we started surfacing for students was questions that other students have asked Flexi. And those questions were available for them. And we decided that they're so valuable for learning right in the core lesson and that teachers may wanna leverage them as well. So we've started putting those top questions that are asked by students on a particular topic at the bottom of those lessons. So if you scroll down on some of our science lessons right now, you'll see some of these questions that students are asking when they're in this topic um, that we've surfaced up as maybe extensions. And students can click that plus sign and it goes and gives the answer that the student got when they asked Flexi that question. The other side of Flexi is Flexi for teachers. So in this particular case, there's a couple things. So one is the notifications for teachers. Teachers need to get, you know, keep on track, know what's happening as well. Um, that ability to nudge a student. And then also last fall, we released our ability to ask Flexi a question about maybe how do I set up a class? And that might have answers from a help center, a short little text answer, or even our quick videos that are usually two to five minutes long 
that just give you that quick understanding of, okay, I go in here, I click this, this is how this works. And it plays out that way. So those are the big ones there. Some of those questions, as you can see here, are maybe tell me about CK12 insights, um, just to get a sense of what they are, if you're unfamiliar with that, or how does this integrate with Google Classroom? Or how do I do something if I want to customize different pieces? So go ahead and take advantage of asking Flexi a question if you're not sure how to do something on CK12 itself. The other piece is notifications. So you'll get notifications that there might be insights available or that students have turned in work. Um, you'll see here on the second or third one down, the second one that's highlighted, one of six students from a particular class needs attention. So maybe they haven't turned in their work and you can nudge them and remind them to do that. So that little, you'll have one new notification pop up, tells you maybe you wanna open up Flexi and see all the tasks or things that are happening. And then something that I know at least some of you guys took advantage of um, was that you might have seen on that pop up that we have an event. So today's webinar was actually posted in Flexi as like a notification to say, if you want to join us today, you can go ahead and register. That pop up has changed a bit. So you get a little register button there. Um, but that notification, if we're doing something, sharing more information, we're going to try to put those notifications in there as well so that you're aware of what our team is doing in addition to what your students are doing. And then if you want to see what it looks like to nudge a student, you can do that from there or within your class report. Um, if you're the 2.0 insight piece. So if you go ahead and you nudge that student and then you'll see on the right that student on that particular lesson is getting that just in time notification as they go through. Um, so go ahead and use that if a student hasn't turned in work and you want to encourage them to make sure that they actually get their work submitted on time. So with that, it looks like our team has answered um, this question. It's actually a great question. So I'm going to highlight this if you guys haven't seen this, but is CK12 accessible on a mobile application? We don't have a separate app, but mobile devices, a browser will actually help you with that particular piece. Um, and we do format to make it sure that our um, platform adapts so that it is really mobile friendly for basically everything except some of our simulations that require our interactives maybe require a slightly larger screen size, um, but those would work on a tablet. Um, it's just that some of that kind of an actual interaction uh, is a little small to do on like some of our smallest mobile devices, but it does work on a tablet, on a desktop, laptop, all the rest of it. Um, and it looks like we have a question regarding kind of accessing um, students for a particular piece for Google Classroom. Um, so if you wanna do assignments for Google Classroom, we actually just did a Google Classroom webinar um, a few weeks ago. And that recording of that is available both on the Google Classroom page, which I will highlight um, at the end of this webinar, as well as on our webinars page. Um, so go ahead and check that out because that will detail exactly how you can um, assign work to students um, and give that whether it's a simulation or a lesson or other resources. Um, and again, we are recording this and this recording will be on that webinars page. Um, it usually takes us a couple of days to kind of get it up there. So just be patient on that one, but we will have it up by early next week. So you can go ahead and check that out. Um, so I think with that, we're going to keep going with this and talk more about what we've done in our content. So as I showed you in our subjects browse, we have changed what's available on math a little bit, and we've pulled all of our older math resources into the 2.0 platform because we really want you to take advantage of those insights and the other pieces and the ability to kind of customize and add your own related content within the 2.0 platform. But we wanted to distinguish between the books that were designed for that more interactive platform and the books that we pulled in. So if you click on the what's the difference below that, you'll see which Flexbook is right for me. And you'll notice that both can be used as your primary curriculum, both have resources, whether that's built into the text itself or in related content, both have adaptive practice for all of our concept collections that are in there. And then the more interactive ones are less print friendly because they're designed really to be exploratory online learning. And so that's the one that if you need to print something, that may be a better choice. They are different books and different kind of designment and how they worked out. And then the more interactive ones are aligned and actually built for kind of that more interactive common core or just the idea for those states that aren't doing common core of exploratory learning. Um, and they have been reviewed and kind of those ed reports are there as well. Um, so definitely check some of those out. Um, 
for the middle school math ones, if you're curious on those reports, or just open up the two different math ones for the algebra one conventional um, or interactive. And you can really see the difference in terms of based on your need as a teacher or district, um, which one might be the better choice for you as you go through, but they really do serve different purposes and still have all of the benefits of that 2.0 platform. We've also been adding feedback for adaptive practice. So we started this project, um, we started talking about it. And over the year, our math team has put feedback in for kind of most of those interactive books. Um, they've really tried to highlight at least all the core practice in there with immediate feedback for students. Um, you'll see some of that because it correlates to the same books in the conventional ones um, that you'll see that feedback as well. And our science team has started that project as well. So you'll start seeing those within science. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as you're thinking through. We, are, we keep adding feedback to our resources, trying to be as instantaneously helpful for students and their understanding, whether they're working within a classroom or they're going in there. Our math teams also added a bunch of new critical thinking questions. Um, and updated some of al our algorithmic questions. So we really continue to enhance our resources and make those as new and helpful as possible for students as we go. The next thing is our interactive content. So if you've been checking around, these are some interactives that you might see within our resources, um, within some of our science text or our math text, inline questions, geometry, actually exploration as you're clicking on text. Um, so this has been around for a while, but we continue to add to that. So I wanna highlight some of our newer ones that you might be starting to see in our biology book. Um, these are similar types that we've been putting in for the last couple of years. But immediate feedback in this example on can you form the equation where someone actually gets to drag and drop and get feedback on how they're doing. Inline questions that you just saw for the previous one for math. Um, the middle thing here with competition, they can click on the different options and see what happens and how that changes for um, brown lizards or green lizards or um, kind of that native specialization options. The predator prey one, you can actually see the populations increase and decrease in relationship to each other. Um, or other ones where you just kind of click on different pieces and highlight different parts um, as you're going through. So we continue to add more and more interactivity in our lessons. So if you pulled a lesson and you customized it a long time ago, go back and check some of our newer ones and see what else is in there and see maybe if you want to pull some of that into your current resources. Another little thing I want to mention as we're talking about content, you know, I talked about the flexi questions at the bottom. This is what the student would see if they're on a CK 12 book um, that changes a little bit when you're customizing. So you're not going to necessarily see that for students, but on the CK 12 books, we've pulled that overview in vocab, um, some extra practice questions. And then in the last year, we've added notable images as those might be great kind of reference charts or resources as they go through. Another thing that we did to make kind of studying accessible is our study guides. Those are available for us kind of smattering of math and science topics. For the ones that are available there, we opened up an embed code. So if you guys um, are using a platform and you wanna embed that resource and just have it kind of be there already, you can also always just copy the URL of a resource and share that with other people. Cause all of our pages have, you know, whether it's a practice set or a lesson or a simulation, Plix Interactive, study guide, all of those URLs are totally useful to just take and copy and share with others. And that's a great way to share resources as well. But this embed code may be useful for you. And then for those of our advanced users that have done their own customization work, um, this is something that our internal team got super happy about. We added a preview option in our editor. So if you're making work and there's this you know, nice little interactive box that doesn't tell you what's in it, you can quickly jump to the preview thing and say, oh, that formatting looks right. That's the right interactive, that's the right video. And then close it out and you don't have to save your draft and go into the main book and come back. So we tried to, streamline and make things as efficient as possible with that preview option. The other thing we did that I mentioned briefly when I talked about customizing practice is that if you have been writing your own questions for practice, those used to live only in the quiz where they were created or that concept. And now we've actually pulled all of those questions. So this is your library. If you click on your name at the top right, click on library, anything you've customized or created from scratch is gonna live in here. And now you can click on the my questions and that will open up all of your questions. You can write new questions, you can expand them and see your questions, you can edit them, you can copy them and adjust a couple pieces, you can search for part or draft. So if you have been writing your own questions on CK12, 
that's a great opportunity to go in and just tweak them or get a sense of all the different types of questions you have right from your library. We also open up one new question type for our users to use, and that's our open response question type. Um, open response questions are a little hard because our system grades for you. And so we wanted to have the opportunity where you could set like a minimum number of characters, um, allow people to copy and paste text if let's say they're pulling a link in or something like that. Um, or you can actually have something where you're requiring an exact word or phrase inside something as you go through. Um, so go ahead and check that out. And if you want to write your own questions, go ahead and explore that new option. We also, in some of our kind of moves and updates, we pulled um, two new books into our Spanish offerings in our 2.0 Flexbooks, our Algebra 1 and our Calculus book. Um, those not only have text, but practice in Spanish as well. So for those of you guys that are um, looking for books in both languages, that's an opportunity to look at an option that has both the text and the practice in that language. And then our adult ed offering. So our last kind of content update is that uh, over a year ago, we partnered with California's Outreach and Technical Assistance Network, what they call themselves OTAN, and we created an adult education page. They started pulling resources from different books and creating you know, high school diplomacy books, um, career and technical education books, and English as a second language book, I think is the newest one that they've been adding some resources for. Um, but we did an update to that page. So there's now stories and testimonials as well as some of their newer books. Um, those books vary from books that have pulled all the resources together into the scope and sequence that they need to ones that they've actually started to drill down and update the content to be, um, you know, let's say an introductory math class that might be more appropriate for an adult learner with some of the content and language in there. Um, so you'll see a wide variety and they continue to add to that. And they encourage you guys, if you happen to work with that population or you're an adult learner to go ahead in and check out that page, um, either from our subjects browse or straight at ck12.org slash adult ed. So one more quick pause for questions. Um, we have some Spanish science books. Um, if you search our flex books on our explore menu, um, you can filter by language and you'll be able to pull up all of our books that are in Spanish. So that's a great opportunity there as well. Um, so I'm gonna go into our learning management system updates as well as some resources as we go in here. Um, we will stay on after for any questions, but go ahead and keep putting those in to our Q&A um, and we will continue to answer them as we go. So one of the new big things we did is Google Classroom launched their add-ons within Google Classroom. Um, and that is available for Google Classroom users that have the teaching and learning upgrade or Google Workspace for Education Plus. So we did not turn off our original assignment functionality. So if you are just using Google Classroom regularly, um, the same way that you've been assigning to Google Classroom forever is still an opportunity. And actually, if you have the upgrade as well, you're more than welcome to continue to use the same assigned functionality that you have. Um, we do just recommend that if you are using the new add-on version that you don't swap back and forth because you can see in the bottom that the turn in and mark complete is a little bit different based on how they've set up those add-ons in Google Classroom. Um, and we're gonna hopefully having worked with them continue to streamline those as much as possible. Um, but the add-on allows you to make assignments while you're in Classroom. Our current assignment functionality allows you to assign to Google Classroom. Both cases do not require a CK12 class. All you have to do is click assign within CK12 and assign to your class or within Google Classroom, open the add-on, pull up something from CK12 and assign that to your class. Um, so it's really a great streamline option. So you don't need duplicate classes and different places and different ways to do work. And students just live in their same class regardless of what their assignment is. Um, so that new add-on is pretty cool to see um, there. If it makes sense for you and it's available to you, go ahead and check it out. Um, or continue to use the way that you've been using Google Classroom assignments as we go. Both of them, this little kind of video is something that Google put together um, when they were promoting their add-ons on their blog. And it really shows kind of that same report as you go through from here, you can see that detailed information um, that's still available if you're assigning the regular way. It's now available kind of inside the Google frame. If you're using the add-on, you can see insights here. This is an opportunity the top right, there's that little kind of demo class option. Um, so definitely check it out regardless of whether it's the add-on or the regular one, all of that reporting is still available to you. 
And for those of you guys that say, okay, great, but how in heaven's name am I going to know how to do this? You can either watch our webinar or the short option is to go to ck12.org slash G hyphen classroom, or just go to our tools and apps page and click on the Google classroom option. And we have two different tabs on there. One is the irregular assignment functionality that we've had for years. And one is our new add-on option. And you can go ahead and explore. And that's gonna have all of your videos as you go through that walk you through. We actually just updated our Canvas and Schoology pages as well. So the same deal, ck12.org slash Canvas or slash Schoology if you are a Canvas or Schoology user. Um, and you can see there that we have these little walkthrough videos with steps and explanations. Those are all just a few minutes long. Um, so if you need to get it set up or you want to assign or you want to give a video to your students and they can watch a two minute video and figure out how to do their work and turn it in correctly, by all means, check those out. Our YouTube channel is a great resource. Um, our quick overviews are on there. We continue to add to those resources. When we did the Google add on, we made a few new videos that we added to there for that. Um, we're adding one soon on related content. So go ahead and keep checking out our YouTube channel and that quick overview in particular, if you're trying to figure out how to do a specific skill or simply ask Flexi, how do I search on CK12 or how do I find a Flexbook? And we'll pull up those resources directly in CK12 for you. You can also see our webinars that we post on there, but the easier option is just to go to our webinars page and our explore menu or straight to ck12.org slash webinars. And you can see all of our archived webinars. So this video from today is our what's new with CK12 in 2022 video. So it's gonna go right below that introduction section in our updates one. And so you'll see three of those by early next week. Um, and you can go back and reference this or share it with a colleague. One other great option for learning about CK-12, if you are unfamiliar, is we have our certified educator program. We've certified thousands of educators from around the world. Um, and you can go in and work your way through a CK-12 Flexbook, do questions, watch videos, um, get a certificate with 10 hours of professional development. Um, you get a little badge that helps you understand kind of, I've seen it in signatures and all sorts of fun stuff. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested and you have the time, that program is free for you guys to work your way through and learn more about CK-12. And you guys get the little preview because you joined us tonight, but we are launching this month our CK-12 trainers. We've actually taken a group of our certified educators and trained them at a higher level and given them the stamp of approval to go out and work with schools and districts and educators um, talking about CK-12. So you definitely check that out when we make a big splash about that later this month. Um, and if you're interested in having one of them work with your school or district, especially those of you guys that are coming from around the world, we have a couple that are on the other side of the world that might be useful for you from a scheduling perspective if you wanted to work with one of them. Um, so that might be an option for you as well. And then a few other quick resources, our overview page, our testimonials page, and our help center. All of those you can get to from our explore menu or by using these short links to learn more about our resources, how educators are using us, or just our simple quick guides for help as you go through. So I think we might have one open question left, but I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're welcome to email us if you have questions at support, reach out via social media. If you need to find us, just search at CK12 Foundation. Um, and you can find our latest blog posts. Um, well, it's been a bit since we've done one, but we have some on Medium and we'll do another one down the road. Um, and stay on if you have questions um, and we'll go from there. So we had one question about the Certified Educator Program. Um, the program is, if you think about programs like Google Certified Educators or other tech certified educators, it is not a license to teach program. It is a program that's a professional development program. Um, and it is going to teach you the in-depth inner workings of CK-12 and some great strategies for applying the resources and rethinking education and teaching using digital resources, both CK-12 and beyond. Um, so it's just keep in mind that it's not a license to teach that comes out of that, but a professional development certificate for hours that you have put in there. Um, so I think with that, we are out of questions. We really thank you all for joining us today. Um, and once again, just go ahead and email us if you have any questions in the future. But in the meantime, have a great night or morning or day or wherever you are. Enjoy. <laughs>